Good morning, I'm Jason Breach from the Axminster Skills Centre. I've been asked to show you the offset Excalibur tenon cutter. This will allow you to cut tenon for a frame door that you're going to recess into the back and put a glass panel, metal or even a material cover panel into. So what we've done to start with is lay the door out as how we want our frame to be. Two uprights, bottom, top rail. Onto there, I've also then marked out where the tenons are actually going to go so we've got our mortar skirt the offset from where the haunch will be on the recess of the inside of the reboot, and then the haunch bit on the bottom here. So all that layout is done before we even start. You need to do that bit first. The other important bit, the depth of the tenon when it goes in, the top of the cutter is 28 millimeters from the top surface to the bottom where the tenon is going to go. So that will give us our frame door. So from there, you can then cut your mortises. So I'm using the 9.5 mil cutter. This will give us 9.5 mil width of rebate for the mortise. So this we can either do a router mortise, you could do by hand. Okay, so that's the first step really to do is mark your mortise out, cut those. So having cut the mortises, give them a little bit of a bang out, clean them out. We can then go back to our door frame. We'll lay them back out how we had them. So we've now obviously got our mortises cut. This will help define where the tenons are going to go. We can use the mortise gap. It's a setup guide with the bit. So that's our next operation, so load the router cutter into the router. Okay, so now we're going to load the router cutter. Um, I'm quite spoiled in here, we use the Bosch router. This means I can actually drop this in and out the table so the motor unit comes out. Certain routers, if you haven't got enough cutter height, be worth looking at a collet extension. This you can put into your router, then load your bit. In this case, we're not going to need that. So, for our router, we can load the cutter. We want to have the K-line on the shank down to where we need to be holding. So that's a good two-thirds of that cutter shank need to be held in here. This has got to be a half-inch shank router. You've got to do this in a table. Next thing that's important while you're thinking of this is check the cutter speed. You want to lower the speed right down this extremely large cutter. So slower speed for bigger cutters, a lot safer. We can always come up a little bit, but it's harder to decrease speed quickly. So from there, we can load the router. That's done. So we've loaded the cutter. Now, first operation we're going to do with this, we're going to cut our tenons. We need some way of physically holding this. You just cannot push them through the cutter. The router's obviously inside the table. We've got half inch diameter cutter. This can only be done on a table. It can never be done freehand. So we've got simple safety sludge that we've made up. This is our birch ply. A couple of nuts adjustable so we can move this along. Anti-slip tape. It's actually a floor tape, but really good as machinist tape. Trouble clamp, hold the work down. Last important thing, somewhere safe to put your hands. So you're not holding the work, you're actually holding the handles. This is all paramount. So we can use this to set up with, so with a bit of wood we've just cut on the mortise, we can use that as our cutter height guide. So from there, we'll grab that. We'll also use a height gauge. So with this it's important because when we cut the tenons, the wood goes face down. So even with the rail now, we've got our face mark, we're actually going to put it face down. We load it we can lock it off. From there, we can use our height gauge. We can bring this down. We can lock up. Then what we need to do is move the cutter height. So on the Bosch router, we've got quick movement. And we can set the top of the bottom tip level with that height gauge. Just a fraction too high now, so we'll come down a little bit. We lock the router back off, that's great, fantastic way of setting up, really quick and easy. So you've taken the internal face of your mortise, leveled it on the cutter. So that's now set, we've set our height. We can now set up everything from the fence, nothing else. So just for a second, we're going to put this out of the way. To set the fence up, we need to open the faces, we come forward. The cutter tells us where maximum depth of cutter is by the bearing on the top. So everything when we cut needs to be level with that bearing. So we come forward. 
we lock off. We check we're level with the bearing. Tighten both sides. So if that wheel working off a safety sledge, it's going to run on the fence. We need to move the faces in as close as we can get them. We lock these off. We can do the other side. Turn the cut around by hand just to check we're going to clear. That's done. If you were using a mitre gauge in the T-slot, you're going to push the work through that. The fence has got to be parallel to the mitre slot. With our case of using the safety sledge, we can run off the fence. That's all it's got to be. So it doesn't matter if the fence is running corner to corner, as long as we're hitting and hitting that bearing where we want to be. The last little bit we're going to put on is just a bevel. This is a glass or perspex screen just to stop any debris coming back at me. This keeps my hands well out the way of that cutter. So that's all set. Last little thing we're going to do, turn the router on at the mains, press the MVR switch just to get an idea of the cutter speed. That's not bad. We want to, we can... Okay. Then in case, just double check everything is locked. So now the table's all set up. The important bit now to do, we're going to cut the tenons. So our piece of wood and our sledge. So you can see how the sledge is going to work. We're just going to check that everything now clears. Didn't think so. So we'll move this around. better. So our workpiece, this is the bit we want for our tenons, the short rails. You can see we've got our internal face, internal edge, face edge. We're going to have a tenon on either end. These need to go face down in the jig. So this is going to face the table, up to our sludge, lock off. The other thing I can do is obviously adjust our movable baton. That holds it in place nicely. Lock this down. This is all now ready to do the tenon. When we do the cut with this, we're going to come out round, through, back off. We're going to do four cuts because obviously we've got four tenons still on this door. The other important bit from there now, it's the health and safety bit. Your earmuffs and your goggles are a must. Okay, so you want both of those. That's all ready to go. Extractor is on. Router. Now we have our rail, we have our tenons either end. You can see the offset clearly now. Okay, so we've got our tenons, we've got our four tenons. Now what we're actually going to do, we're going to do the rebate groove that runs around the inside edge. So that'll just be a groove to start with. Then we can lower the cutter and we can do the second bit to give us a complete rebate. So we can use the one cutter to do both tasks. So we can actually use the tenon to set up in the table. So first thing we want to do is get the sledge out of the way. Just going to move the fence back a little bit to give us a bit of better view. And we need to move the router. So what we're trying to do now, we've got the board face up. So you can see our face marks. We now want to set the cutter level. So this tip, big tip on the base here, is level. Just by winding it up. We're here now with your pencil, we can feel that nice and gently, just coming down a little bit. That's good. I lock off the router. That's nice and flush. So that's set. The next thing we want to do is reset the fence. So 
We're not going to want the bubble, that can come out the way. The fence this time, different position. We've got to come a little bit further forward. A little bit trickier this time because you're lining up with the top tooth on the outside diameter. So you've got to get this diameter face exactly right. Do this one, take your piece of wood, bring your fence forward. I've done one side, just going to balance things a little bit more. Come to the other. The belt is off on the mains. We want to come forward a little bit more. Best way to get a bit of access to feel this through the extraction nozzle. Just a fraction. Important to get this nice and spot on. That's good. Just spinning it. So we lock that off. Check the cutter clears the feather board or the face boards because you've now moved things. This one's a little bit close. So we're just going to open that side, we lock it off again. We undo the other side, move this in, cut down the gap that we've got now to a minimal. We then will want our feather board, so this will go on the back. This is designed to give us a bit of pressure to push the workpiece down on the table. So, piece of wood just in underneath, roughly central to there. Check how much pressure we have, it's not bad. The other thing we want to do is just check the cutter rotates. So again, the access point I can use is the extraction. Power is still off, that's good. Last thing we want to do, just reconnect the extractor. Well, now we want something to push it through with, so simple push block. Then behind the workpiece, catches on, gives us some way of moving this, much easier than fingers. Gives you something to drive through with. So from there, that's pretty much all done. Next thing I need, just my earmuffs. So the workpiece here, when we present all four bits, we will see our face marks there coming face up. Our rebated edge is going face against the fence. So our arrow. It's going in towards the fence. We can turn both on. Extract it on. Okay, so we've got our groove now, level with our mortise. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to remove the back material here. I want this totally out of the way. So this is going to come off. So what we're actually going to do, we're going to drop the cutter down in the table, going to lower it. So that cutter knife, the big one we've just done, just by viewing through, I can push the cutter down with a pencil tip just for a second. It's going to remove that bottom material. So, from here, this tip now is level with there, we can go in, 
Other things to double check while you're here, well, I'm going to hurt to undo the feather ball with reposition. This goes through. What we don't want to be doing is catching. So I want to come down. No, we're going to come up just a little bit now. What we're trying to make sure is that this tooth isn't going to catch too much of the work, if at all. If it's nice and level, it shouldn't affect it. So we've locked that off. The other way you could always do this, as long as you can get enough height on your outer, is turn the work over and bring the cutter up higher. Okay, we're going to run through this way. So our uh, board, we come back in, we lock off. That'll go through nicely, nice and firm. So here my some. Extractor, router. Go up. Push our work piece through. We're just a little bit high with the router, now we're getting a little splintered edge, so before we push the rest of them through, we'll check it, lower it down a little bit. That's better. Okay, so you can see now we've got our rebate, our groove. In a minute, what we're going to do is then fit the challenge in. So instead of watching all of that, I'm just going to put the other three through. Okay, so having finished on the router, we've got our grooves in all four bits. What we're now going to do is cut the recessed bit for the haunch so it will fit into the shoulder line. So you can see where this is going to go. It's going to fit here. We've got to cut a little square section out here. You could do this handsaw, bandsaw, whatever you like. I'm just going to go handsaw so I'll get a few bits that will help us. If you've got lots of these to do, you can mark stuff out. So we want a length line. Come up to our shoulder. We can do mark in there. You can test fit this just to see where it's going to go. That looks good. How far down do we need to come? Level with this back shoulder, the shorter one. So we're going to cut across here and cut this corner off. So we can put that in the vise, check where we are, we want our hand saw myself down so I can see my line. Now this is a case of working from two sides now. Then from there we can turn it over. Looking carefully, depends on how brave you're feeling. Cut level with the shoulder line. We knock off that corner. I think there's any material to get out of here. Carefully, nice sharp chisel. Just flatten that back. Okay, so that will now give us our tenon. So you can see we've got the offset point on here, the haunch bit. This is the other side of the tendons to the offside. Let's just move a few things. So this should then for go together in here. So from there we do the other other two. So you get that all fitted, we can put the whole frame together. Okay, so having cut all the haunches off our tenons, we can dry fit the door. So, line everything up, give it a tap, push it down, let's take it out and have a look. So, they line up nicely, you give it a bit of glue, flip it over, you can see our rebated edge. This allows your deck to glass or your panel, whatever you want to fit in there to go in. That looks pretty good. So. That gives you a bit of an idea of how to use the Escalibur offset tenon catcher.